Hi, Coach Scott here. Today we're going to talk about saddle sores, or more specifically, how to prevent them or get rid of them, how to avoid them and keep you sitting on your bike with a smile on your face. So before we start, saddle sores tend to happen on the same side, in the same spot. Is that you? Leave a comment if it is. And is this you? You've tried to fix it by buying a new saddle. Let me tell you, as I have done in so many other videos, the saddle is likely okay for you. Sure, different saddles have bigger margins of error in terms of where they're placed and how they will accommodate different levels of posture. Okay? Have that word in your mind, posture. So remember, your saddle is built symmetrically. Of course it is. It's even on either side. No matter what its shape is, it's wanting you to sit balanced on the saddle. And your sit bones, more than likely, are pretty symmetrical. But life has pushed you over. Life has made you fall. Life has caused injuries. Life may even have brought children into the world and that has changed the way that the connective tissue, your ligaments and tendons, work with your pelvis. What does that mean, coach? It means on your symmetrical sandal, you ain't sitting symmetrically. You're sitting asymmetrically. That's a fancy word for in Scotland, we say, you're sitting squint, big man, okay? It just means you're tilting through the saddle, ever so slightly, but that tilt is causing, common sense tells you, more pressure on one side. That pressure is leading to breaking of the skin or a blister, a saddle sore, and that's painful, and that's keeping you off the bike. So let's stop that. Let's get you back on the bike. So first thing, stop chasing saddles. Don't buy another saddle. Also, chamois cream. I love this stuff, yeah? But it's for friction usually for other reasons. We don't need it. Buying expensive pads, yes, will increase comfort. Fix a saddle sore? No, it won't. Here's how we're gonna do it. So having in mind this symmetrical position of the pelvis, the first thing that I tend to see is people have their saddle too high. If you want to know more about saddle height, etc., check out the live video that I just recently uploaded. It's somewhere on the screen, okay? Now, if we sit on the saddle and it's too high because you've read that, oh, the higher the saddle, the more power I can get. I can be more like a pro. Well, I'm 50. What age are you? Are you closer to my age? Do you really need to have the same position as a pro in their 20s that weighs 55 kilograms? You don't have to comment on that. If our limb is stretched to its maximum, I want you thinking about our arms. So let's say you're typing or writing. Have you ever done it like that? No, because it's stupid, coach. I wouldn't do that. But if we extend our limbs, we lose stability, we lose control. So if our foot and hip are at their furthest point, the stability is less, and guess what? Your dominant side is stronger. The connective tissue may be more flexible, so we get that tilt. We usually lead, for me, on my right-hand side. Let's say 85 to 90% of the cycling population are right leg dominant. We're gonna tilt on that right-hand side. I'm gonna lead from that side. If the saddle's too high, wow, you're massively increasing that instability. And you're just inviting the saddle sore into your ass party. That didn't sound right. So what to do with the saddle too high? Start by moving it down five millimeters. That's all, five millimeters at a time and see how that feels. You must have small movements so you've got a baseline. If that doesn't feel any better, move it down five millimeters more. But once you've hit 10 millimeters of reduction, I want you to move it back three to five millimeters. I want you to be playing around with the angle between the hip, the knee and the foot. If we keep, keep dropping, we may just interfere with the four half position that will highlight more instability. Okay, next point I wanna talk about is the reach. If the reach is too long, what will tend to happen is the rider will push the saddle a little bit forward so they can interact with the, the levers and the handlebars better. But by doing that, you'll move more to sit on the nose of the saddle. Now that's okay for an all out effort, but not all day riding. The nose is narrower, so therefore, instability. Very hard to sit on something that thin and stay stable all the time. Now, how do you check if your reach is too long? I've showed you before, if we hold our arms out, drop down, where does the hood hit your hand? 
if it hits towards the base of the palm, the reach is probably okay. But for a lot of riders, it may hit in the middle of the hand or even where the fingers start. So you are stretched out and you've already moved your saddle forward. So you've changed the interaction between the hip, the knee and the foot in relation to the bottom bracket. What's that doing? You're losing power potentially. So you're overloading through the handlebars and you're overloading through the perineum. So you've probably gone to something like and reach over and get this, a stumpy saddle, because you think, oh, I've got too much perineum pressure, I'll get a shorter saddle and that'll help. But I've still got the saddle sore, coach. You know why you've got it, don't you? <laughs> so what can we do? Well, we can shorten the stem, we can maybe narrow the bars, we want to bring the bike closer into us. Now that may be something that you can do, or maybe not. Maybe it's something you'd investigate for your next new bike. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how we interact with the pedals. So, our shoes. Cleat placement is super important and when someone's got a saddle sore, I'll always look to bring the cleats back to stabilize the foot. By stabilizing the foot, I can help to contribute to more stability through the pelvis. Although things do go down, you've got to remember. So we're always looking at the pelvis first. But try this, next time you're out or you're on your turbo trainer, unclip one foot and do one-legged drills. And if you hear a click, 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 click of the cleat against the pedal, it's likely that your foot and pedal are moving at different speeds. And that might be because your shoe's too wide, it's too long. It may be that the stability of the foot needs work on. So address your shoes and have a look and see if you can get shoes that are better fitting or start to do foot stability work. And I mean, standing on one foot in between a door, you may in increase your balance. By doing that, you're adding to what we call the proprioceptive control through the foot. And it makes a big difference how we interact with the saddle. So that leads me nicely onto the last point, the physical developments we can make. Makes sense, doesn't it? If we've got that pelvic instability and we're dipping down on one side, our dominant side, let's balance that out. Glute exercises, hamstring exercises, stretching the quadricep. You may be a rider who's got very strong quadriceps, but maybe too strong because you've let your hamstring weaken. The quadriceps doing too much work, the glutes inactive. Therefore, if we balance out our muscular forces through the bike, we can decrease that instability through the pelvis. It's quite simple to do. I've got lots of videos whereby I go through exercises and over the next coming weeks, as we sort of enter into the autumn period of my season, I'm gonna be doing so many of them and sharing with you. You need to make sure you subscribe to the channel in fact, hit that notification bell because we go live every Monday night at seven o'clock where I share lots of tips on not just only bike fitting, but training and improving performance for everyone who gets on a bike. And hey, if you've enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a little thumbs up and leave a comment. I do get back to everybody. And hey, remember, anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart. So you stay safe, keep spinning, and keep smiling. And I'll see you soon. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever forget your golden. I will find a light in your soul. I'll